This is our program, People Talk. I guess you realise that domestic family violence is a terrible blight in Australia, one of the leading causes of homelessness. It doesn't discriminate, affecting women, men, children of all ages and of cultural heritage. And I was astounded to read more than one million Australian children are affected by domestic and family violence. On my line at the moment is Dr. Majda. She's the CEO of Global Education Academy. I'm delighted to have you on the line, Majeta. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Chris, for having me. That's a pleasure. Just a question. Don't we talk about domestic violence, which is a bit of an ugly topic. Why are you so passionate, Majeta, about helping men and women who are suffering domestic violence? Uh, well, Chris, it is something that has been hard for me to speak about, I have to admit. I myself experienced um, domestic violence in my in my past. I lived for 17 years in a violent marriage. Although I have exited that marriage in 2005, it took me until 2019, 14 years, to be able to speak about it. So it is my part and finally got the courage to be vocal about it and help others. It is something we as a society can prevent by educating them and allowing women to be independent mentally and financially. That's the main reason why I do have that passion for it. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. It seems astounding to me. We talk a lot about it, and yet my figures show a one million, around about a million children in this country yeah. are affected by domestic. That's a huge figure, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, sadly, it is a huge figure, yes. But uh, I... I tend to think that it's not that it's more now, it's not that it's more common now. It is actually more spoken about it now. So do you think it's always been there, but it's been kept hidden? Definitely, definitely. As I said, it took me 17 years in the marriage, which I was silent. 14 years after that, I was silent. And finally, I'm talking about it. Now, me as a figure will be added to these statistics now, on the last year. But it has been there all the time. And you wonder how many women do not talk about it. So I believe it has been common for a long time. There are several factors that contributed to the fact that it is in the spotlight more these days than before. Why is domestic violence so common in virtually any town or city? You don't have to be in the country or regional areas. You can be anywhere. Why is it so common in Majeta? It's not more common now than before, as it said, Chris. It's more people these days talk about it. The, the world, as we know, is more connected now. So we know about someone in the other side of the world, which we before did not know that someone next door, you know. Also, women are not as silent as they used to be. They do not accept it these days as much as they did before. Also, I would say um, domestic violence these days is not as stigmatized it used to, as it used to be. Um, so there are more women who are likely to talk about it these days because it's not as stigmatized as it used to be. So they don't feel the embarrassment that they used to feel in the past. And also, I would say because if you speak about it, there is more support available now. While in the past, why would you talk about it? You get embarrassed, there's no support, why would you talk about it? While these days, where well, there is support if you speak about it and if you speak up. So that encourages women and um, children even to talk about it. Yes, it's certainly a good thing to talk about it. Um, yeah. one, neg is, um, one negative thing I was going to say, doesn't that put the women at risk? Um, well, they are at risk anyway. If they don't speak about it, they are under domestic violence and family violence. They are, if they speak about it, at least they, they will get some support. Absolutely, yes. Now, you're yeah. the CEO, Jada, of the Global Education Academy. Just yeah. tell me how the academy works. Let me first tell you, before I, I speak about this, Chris, I will, um, let me tell you, and explain how I was able to leave the violent marriage. Sure. Which I found, I found myself in that marriage at the age of 17. At that time, I insisted to start my university degree. So after I finished high school, got married, the only thing that I wanted is to get to university. So I did study mathematics, computer sciences, bachelor degree. Took me four years. Then I did a master's degree, took me another three years, and that was back in Israel, in a Palestinian village in Israel. 
I knew I could not get out of that marriage and have custody on my three children if I did it in that country. So I decided to get out, go to a Western country where there is no to protect me at least. I studied really hard and I gained a scholarship to study at UNW for a PhD degree. That was my ticket to freedom. It wasn't easy and it was almost impossible to get these scholarships and to get out of a country with three children. So this experience actually proved to me that having education and a couple of degrees um, under your belt is very powerful. Would I be able to do that without my education, without my degree? Absolutely not. Of course, from culture to culture, from time to time, from country to country, the magnitude of these things may vary. However, wherever you go, no one can take your education from you. You will always have the skills to survive, the confidence and the high self-esteem because you've done it. It's not easy to get three degrees or one degree or two. So you feel that confidence and high self-esteem. So education does make people confident and have high self-worth at least. And that makes them less accepting to be a victim of domestic violence. But more importantly, come up with a solution because you are equipped with problem-solving skills and survival skills. So when you go to university, when women and girls go to university, it's not about just getting assignments, getting ticked, getting um, marks. It's, it's about the survival skills that they learned throughout that three, four, five years. So in the academy, we support girls to get to high level of ATAR, so it's high, high level of education, high level of ATAR and HSC. So we do support them through um, partial and full scholarship. We have special ones for single mothers as well. Um, not all mothers come and say, hey, I'm under domestic violence, give me a scholarship for my daughter. But we do have that venue where they can anonymously put that request and ask for uh, a scholarship or, or, or support. We also support girls. There is an organization in Melbourne. It's called One Girl. And that is an organization that supports girls in Africa to, to pay their tuition fees to go to high school. Because in two countries, um, Uganda and Sierra Leone, girls cannot go to high school without paying fees. And their families, of course, do not have the, the income for that. So they, they'd rather get them married and um, early age. So by enabling them to, to go to high school, we, we minimize the risk, the risk of domestic violence and child the concerns that come in. Wonderful. That's a fantastic venture that you're involved in. I want to move just now, Majita, to Aboriginal yes. women. Um, yes. From what I've read also, it must be a concern to you as an advocate that Aboriginal women are especially, especially vulnerable to mm -hmm. violence. Definitely, and and that is a very sad true sad truth. Um, any minority is is more vulnerable than others, and that's due to the conditions of that community, including the lack of education, low socioeconomic status. It all goes it all goes back to how independent women are financially and socially and mentally. So in these communities, women are more at risk because of that. The whole package that comes to being in, in a minority. But the good thing that the government is doing something about it, so I, I got some statistics here from the National Plan to Reduce Violence Against Women and Their Children, 2022, it quotes a figure of Indigenous females being up to 35 times more likely to, ex to experience domestic and family violence than non-Indigenous Australian women. So the, the, the government is finally um, aware of it and, and finally they are doing something about it. It is encouraging, but it goes back to education all the time. So education, education. My special guest today here on the Sounds of MacArthur, Dr. Majida Awada from the Global Education Academy. Majida is a powerful voice to help women, young people, young women, and I guess older women, also to get financial independence as well. I want to ask you too now about homelessness. Yes. What part does homelessness play in this domestic violence issue? 
Well, I, I would say homelessness or even the fear of being or becoming homeless plays a huge factor. It is one of the major reasons why women stay in a violent ma- relation or marriage. Adding to that is the fact that there are women who are fearing being stigmatized or and financially disadvantaged if the relationship ends like losing the house, losing the source of income or the comfortable life. There are women who stay in a relationship because of these factors. It's not just the homelessness, but the fear of losing that higher status or the fear of being homeless. There are so many issues here, aren't there? Oh, yes. (laughs) And look, good on you for what you're doing. But I want to finally ask you, it's okay to talk about this and people talk about it all the time. But what about the solutions? Are there, Can you see any long-term solutions coming? It's the education. So education, education, education. Education gives women the confidence and the feeling of worthness and, and valuable. Um, education leads to a good uh, and more respectful job and a higher status in society, which will eventually result in independence. And that is the key word here. If women are independent, not just financially, financially is the big one, but if they are independent emotionally, independent um, in the society, independent in terms of even mentally, they are less likely to accept that situation. So for all women, please advocate for education for your daughters. Yes, they can find a job without a degree. Yes, they can have a job without going to um, TAFE or tertiary education. But as we experiencing now, jobs are disappearing. And there will be more job disappear- jobs disappearing. The type of jobs that will disappear, the ones that uh, they're not future proof. The technology, the internet is changing the whole world. We need people with education, with degrees, who can survive. So the long-term solution, I would say, is education. Some very helpful advice there from uh, Dr. Machida there. And uh, I want to thank you today on this afternoon for giving us this background and also for being brave enough to share your own experience from Israel and the terrible time you had there. And as you say, you're not a survivor. You, you've overcome so much in your own life and now empowering women and men, I guess, too. Um, let's not forget that some men are victims as well, aren't yeah. they? That is very true, but women, we, we are born to survive. We are born to endure pain and, and get up and rise and rise again. We are mothers, so we have the, that bone in, in, in our DNA. Thank you for joining me today, Machida. Thank, thank you very much, Chris, for this opportunity.